Why is the largest ancient structure on this entire planet attributed to a king who only stands out because of this attribution? Khufu did not build the Great Pyramid, and the likelihood is that none of the dynastic Egyptians built it. And our timeline of history needs addressing as a major cultural influence has swayed us from the truth regarding the past. But not to completely dismiss Khufu as having built the enigmatic masterpiece that is the Great Pyramid, what else do we know about this king? Who was Khufu, for example, and how has he been portrayed as a king during his reign? First of all, nowhere does it say what the Great Pyramid is, who built it, or why. The Khufu cartouche is a hoax, and the paint has already carbon dated to the 19th century. So, the Great Pyramid therefore is not attributed to this king. It was made up for prosperity. A papyrus that dated to the time of Khufu are some of the most dramatic texts from this dynastic period. The Westcar Papyrus, named after Henry Westcar, who acquired it, describes fantastical tales that have been described by Egyptologists as just fairy tales. Now, get this. This papyrus is an open invitation from the king, Khufu. He invited his sons to tell the stories of the past and the wonders of the ancients. This was a test by Khufu to his sons. The king taught his sons about these times of old, and it was a good exercise to see how well his sons could remember what they had been told. So these texts are historical documents of past events in every sense. Make no mistake. The beginnings and endings of the papyrus are missing, but the stories convey wonderful stories of dynastic events. Djoser and the architect Imhotep are mentioned, and that section of the tale which is preserved is a set piece which also appears in the next two stories in which Khufu approves of the tale told and decrees an elaborate sacrifice he made to the people in the story. In one of the tales, Khufu is confronted by a prince named Hardadif, who says to the king that you have heard examples of the skill of those who have passed away, but there one cannot know truth from falsehood. But there is with your majesty in your own time one who is not known to you. This prince then begins to tell the king about the existence of a magician named Jedi, believe it or not who had lived for about a hundred years and has an unbelievable consumption rate. He tells the king that this magician is known for reattaching a severed head to a human body and making it live again. This magician could resurrect the dead according to the prince in the Westcar Papyrus. When the prince brings the magician to Khufu, the magician tells the king that it is against the will of God to kill a man to demonstrate this magic. and instead cuts a goose head off and reattaches it. Boom! Miracle! Khufu is astounded and seizes the opportunity to pick the ancient brain of the magician regarding one of the ancient secrets the king had heard about, that being the knowledge regarding the number of shrines in the enclosure of Thoth. The magician tells the king that he does not know this secret, only where they are kept, and that it is written in sacred text that a future king will be able to bring them, a future king that would replace Khufu's family in dynastic Egypt. Khufu's interest and acceptance of the magical things would suggest that this was a physical presence in these times of this great empire, but it is entirely unclear exactly who he was because very little remains in any form regarding his reign. If you exclude the Great Pyramid, then Khufu is almost non-existent except for these scant texts. A strange little fact regarding the historicity of the 4th dynasty of Egypt. Remember, this was the time apparently of the pyramid builders, yet in the 5 volume, 1500 page Ancient Records of Ancient Egypt, which is indexed by dynasty and pharaoh and includes texts transcribed from ancient documents and artifacts, Yet, in these volumes, they include only 13 pages on the celebrated pyramid builders of the 4th dynasty. Why is that? Well, that is because very little is known and a lot is made up and spread out to the masses in an indiscriminating fashion, a 
very dangerous practice that has blinded us for millennia. According to Herodotus, the Egyptian people hated their king. Herodotus says that Khufu was despised. The people couldn't even speak his name and during his reign, Khufu enforced labor. He was a tyrant according to Herodotus. In the book, The Pyramid Odyssey, the author states that there simply are not enough historical markers from this period and to describe this era in our time was very dishonest because there is no clear and solid evidence of any kind that there was a pyramid building fourth dynasty king called Khufu, in fact. The entire pattern of evidence suggests, on the contrary, that if there ever was a King Khufu, he lived long after the Great Pyramid was built and was named after the pyramid and not the other way around. Khufu isn't the king we are being told that he was. He wasn't someone who could master incredible feats of engineering brilliance that still has the modern world in complete bewilderment as to how it was done. Khufu instead was a dreamer, entertained by his own advice, questioned by his own authority, and despised by the people he ruled over. However, later rulers remember him, maybe because Khufu set the bar so low that no other ruler could do any worse, and all other pharaohs thereafter are more influential over their population of residents. What does constructing the greatest monument in the entire world get you? Nothing, because he didn't do it. Maybe the artifacts were looted, lost to time. Maybe. The identity of Khufu is one that is shrouded with mystery, and there is no defining image of this king. The bizarre reality is that the only artifact attributed to this king is a three inch tall ivory statue that was discovered in 1903. It bears his name, but even this is the subject to much controversy. The statue was discovered headless, ironically, but get this. They didn't find the head for over a month after the body discovery, and some have suggested that this is another hoax, just like the cartouche. Again, we are confronted by an artifact that we are told what it is. What if this isn't Khufu? Khufu the king is lost to history. We hardly know anything about him apart from tales that could be fantastical for his entertainment, and the evidence is totally underwhelming to put it politely. But perhaps we will uncover more objects attributed to the king that we are yet to discover. But in the meantime, isn't it now obvious that the evidence, like our understanding, needs re-examining? The son and successor to Khufu, Judefra, assumed the title son of Ra. He was the first king to do so. Khufu doesn't show an reference to the sun god Ra, but the presence of the solar barge next to the Great Pyramid that he didn't build appears to be an extension of the solar cult, however. In the 1974 book, The Sphinx and the Megaliths in the Ancient Egypt's Myth, the author states that Ra, the sun god himself, was born anew every morning from an egg. The author points out that the hundreds of egg-shaped stone circles in the United Kingdom, which appear to date from the same period as the cult of Ra, may represent the spread or origin of the god known as Ra, a god synonymous with Kunim, the god Khufu is named after. Judefra isn't attributed with a pyramid at Giza, but it is attributed by the Abu Rawash pyramid, which may be taller than the Great Pyramid, and the association with this pyramid to Judefra, Khufu's son, is every bit as tedious as the association with Khufu being the builder of the Great Pyramid. It's unbelievable that they are associating dynastic times in Egypt with much more ancient constructions. There is no real proof that any 4th Dynasty pharaoh built anything more than mastabas or small satellite pyramids that served as adjuncts to existing pyramids. In our surmise, the 4th Dynasty pharaohs were simply restoring the pyramids and other structures for ceremonial purposes, engraving hieroglyphics after the restoration. During the 19th century, in an ancient temple directly beside Khufu's pyramid, archaeologists discovered a stela with an inscription clearly showing that the pyramid and the sphinx must be older than commonly accepted by Egyptology. 
The Stila states that Khufu built only a small satellite pyramid and that the Great Pyramid and the Sphinx were already in place when he came to Giza. This is very important because it contradicts all opinion about Khufu as the builder of the Great Pyramid. In the inscription, Khufu builds a pyramid for the princess next to the temple of the goddess Isis. The Great Pyramid and the other two large pyramids were already there, as was the Great Sphinx, and this was King Khufu himself stating this. The stela in question was classified by Egyptologists as a fake. However, a translation of the text by American archaeologist James Henry Breasted suggests that the text reads as follows. Khufu, who is given life, he found the house of Isis, mistress of the pyramid, beside the house of the Sphinx on the northwest of the house of Osiris, lord of Rasta. He built his pyramid beside the temple of this goddess, and he built a pyramid for the king's daughter beside this temple. So there you have it. Very little solid contextual information exists, if any, to suggest that Khufu could have anything to do with constructing the Great Pyramid. In fact, it would seem this king was in awe of its presence during his reign. It is astonishing that this king is being attributed to the construction of the Great Pyramid, and we wanted to build a better picture for you guys in our understanding of these things, and why we can't believe that he built the greatest masterpiece on the face of the earth. Nothing exists to suggest this was the case. In fact, the evidence suggests the opposite. But what do you guys think about this anyway? Comments below, and as always, thank you for watching.